Hey, Ash Hill, ThingsCentury.com. So, we're working with MTA tonight. <clears throat> and typically one of the ways we can place it, we can place it just freehand with um, any instrument you have. Or typically make your life easier, use the map system. So, the map system, micro apical placement system, I placed MTA a number of times without this, and I knew that this existed, but it was very difficult. So, this was made in Switzerland. And essentially, it's a micro amalgam carrier. So, here are the contents. We have just a number of different tips, number of different tip sizes, different styles. These are for apical surgeries. These are yellow is fine, red is moderate, and then there's a Big Bertha version, the blue. And what it comes with, so the way it works is you've got your piston and then you've got your the carrier so this is the sort of syringe that's spring loaded and what I do is you can see there's a groove there we take the piston to the according to the size that you're using and place that in here let's go with the blue and with the pistons as you can see here there are two different kinds there's a plastic disposable one they're chasing around the paper plastic disposable one and we've got a nitai one. Now the most, cr I think one of the most critical things that's going to slow you up when you pull this out after a couple uses is that it hasn't been cleaned properly. And the MTA sets, manufacturer says it sets in four hours but typically, okay so four hours and beyond this stuff is, I mean it's cement, it's Portland cement. So these little micro carriers get filled up and you're going to spend more time chair side fiddling around just if, you, if it's not cleaned before properly after use. That is my statement for today because I've been there and done that several times and it's frustrating. So we push on the, on the syringe barrel carefully as the instructions say put the piston on release it and then place the carrier onto the syringe and then tighten. Now you got to make sure that when you go to push that you can see the end bring that up here. see the end of the piston all the way out because if you don't it's not going to extrude your material and it has to have some sort of you have to feed there has to be a clearance that piston stops to about here for it to pick up any material so that is the same principle for any of the angled carriers for your, for your apical surgeries. There are some little stoppers, like for endophiles, to place on the, the end of the system. I haven't quite figured out why you would do that. If you know, place it in the comments, because I read the instructions and I still don't understand it. So now, what we're going to do is load this and see it. So I've got some MTA placed here. And we'll show how to mix that in a second. So this is the little dappen dish. It's typically how you want to mix your MTA. I mean, you can mix it any way you want, by all means. So I'm going to use the and the the large carrier, for example. And essentially, the MTA is not too wet, not too dry. It's one of those kind of got a feel, go for a feel for it. And it's like loading an amalgam carrier. So this is in the last two minutes has dried out. So what we can do, and this is essentially mixing it, we take some anesthetic because we're only going to need a drop. There is sterile water that comes with it, but you'll see we'll just do that one drop and it wets it sufficiently here. And the manufacturer suggests mixing it for one minute to make to ensure that all the particles are well hard hydrated. It's been mixed for the last minute and a half. So that looks to be a little bit wet, but let's try it. Yeah, it is. So what we can do now is take a cotton pellet, a dry one, and just dab off some of the moisture on the surface. Okay, you can see I removed some of that there. There we go. 
So it's a real kind of... Just got to do it for yourself to figure out. Once you do it once, you'll never forget. Okay, so now we take this into, say, our furcal perforation on this tooth and place it. But before we do that, let's extrude some of this onto the paper so you get a, an idea. So you can see that is what would be delivered. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. Wow. And they call, they say a dentistry is not exciting. Come on. Okay, so that's the amount that would be extruded, and then you use your condenser. Uh, and ultrasonics, etc., to pack it into the location that you need. So let's try this one more time. We're going to place it into my furcation perforation that I made. So again, I'm just packing it in, condensing it into the carrier. I mean, you can do this any way you want. It's a cute little amalgam, little Daffin dish. And say for example, I've done this once, perforated right in the middle. And there's a good example of what I did wrong. So what I didn't do is I didn't pull, I didn't pull back on the syringe to make sure. So you heard that click. So I. I extruded my I extruded my material and then I neglected because what happens is with time MTA builds up in the tip so I didn't pull back on it so nothing actually got filled in there I apologize for wasting a minute of your time okay sufficient. So now what we're going to do, make sure we get that in the shot, let's place it into the perforation. There we go. We take our condensing instrument. Dense apically. You may need to fill this a few times. You can use ultrasonics if you have to ensure that you have a dense fill. And as I learned last year, the, the question I ask, which was asked of me, is when is the best time to fix a perforation? I'll let you answer that. So in this case, we could place another level, another layer of MTA, and then place our restoration, whether we're completed with the endodontic therapy or our provisional restoration or whatever. And years ago, we used to come back 24 hours later and then ensure that it's hard, set hard. But now, uh, typically, the advice is you can go ahead and place your permanent restoration if need be. I hope that helps. Cheers.